My generation and the generations who have followed know that this epidemic of gun violence is not unstoppable. It is a choice, a choice you could make differently at any time, a choice between our lives and your guns. Time after time, we have given you a chance to do something. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Parkland, and time after time, you have chosen to put your right to kill over our right to live. But your selfishness and your indifference have not killed our hope. You have transformed it. It is up to us to save ourselves from you. We did not choose this fight. We had our own dreams for our lives, the same as you did when you were kids, but we can't let you get away with this anymore. Enough is enough. Democratic Congressman Mondaire Jones of New York in a passion address speaking directly to the Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee as they argue against gun reform measures. The congressman joins us now, and the Washington Post's Eugene Robinson has the first question. Eugene. Uh, Congressman Jones, uh, good to speak with you. That was a very powerful speech uh, yesterday. Uh, clearly, the Judiciary Committee and the Democratic majority in the House are prepared to act, prepared to perhaps take meaningful action on gun violence. Um, over in the Senate, however, um, clearly it's a different picture. Now, let's, let's suppose that the Senate actually does something. But it's it's woefully inadequate. It's it's terribly uh, uh, incremental. It uh, it doesn't really move the ball, but an inch or a centimeter. But but it is something. Um, is is the House then prepared to say, okay, you know, we we didn't get what we need, but we did get this. Would the House be prepared? To, to go along with that sort of move by the Senate that, again, is incremental and inadequate, but that is something as opposed to nothing. Well, first of all, it's great to be with you all. Listen, we've got to pass legislation that makes a difference in the lives of America's children. And if that means passing something that is not as far as the American people or Congress, Democrats in particular, would like to go in this moment, then we need to do that even as we fight for so much more. Uh, we passed legislation out of the Judiciary Committee last night, and we still need to add a ban on assault weapons to that array of, of legislative options moving forward. And I'm not giving up on that. We can do both of these things. We can pass legislation for which we can get 10 Republican senators even as we continue to have up or down votes on more ambitious but urgently necessary and broadly supported provisions in the House of Representatives. Congressman, um, you're running in a new congressional district this time out. You're uh, going to be introducing yourself to a brand new constituency, a lot of it in lower Manhattan, river to river. And guns, no doubt, is a huge issue. It's a huge issue nationally, and it'll be a huge issue again in your district. Children getting killed at school, always an issue. But there are other issues. Gas, groceries, lack of infant formula. And America's attention span, as you know, is fleeting. How do you get through that morass of issues, especially guns, to get talking about the important items to my American families, the cost of living? Well, look, thank you for acknowledging that ending gun violence is top of mind for everybody in America right now. Uh, but of course, there's also the soaring costs of daily living. I know this personally. I grew up in Section 8 housing and on food stamps, and I was raised by a young single mom who still had to work multiple jobs to provide for our family. So I know the struggles of working people. I have been so excited to be having these conversations with folks in Lower Manhattan and in Brooklyn, in New York's 10th Congressional District. And I've been fighting for those people. I've been fighting for these constituencies already. Uh, based on the work that I've been doing in Congress, passing the American Rescue Plan, uh, which cut costs for working families, not least of which cutting child poverty in half, uh, and keeping public schools and small businesses open and employees employed at those small businesses. And then more recently, I worked to pass the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which is going to bring billions of dollars to New York State and is going to help create millions of good-paying union jobs over the next several years. So when I hear from folks, I hear them talk about the need for good paying jobs and of course the need to reduce the costs of, at, at the grocery store and at the gas pump. 
And we need to continue to do that. We need to hold the oil companies accountable and the meat companies accountable for that reason. I do that as part of the antitrust subcommittee on the Judiciary Committee. So, Congressman, you are now running to stay in Congress in a new, hotly contested district, the new, newly created New York 10th District. In fact, your fellow Democrats running for it, two of them announced their candidacy on this show, Daniel Goldman and former New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. Give us a brief pitch, if you will, why you would be the best choice to represent this new district in New York City. This is a district that deserves a progressive champion with a track record of actually delivering results in office. Uh, and who's going to fight like hell in the face of all of these threats that we've got. I've been a leader in the Congress, a leader in the Congress, someone who has played a leading role in passing transformative legislation and who has also co-authored transformative legislation. You know, I'm the guy who introduced legislation to add four seats to the Supreme Court, understanding that this far-right 6-3 majority was going to be at precisely this point in history where it is poised to overturn Roe v. Wade and so many other fundamental rights. I'm also really excited to be fighting to end domestic terrorism, white supremacist domestic terrorism. We've seen our AAPI brothers and sisters targeted. We've seen black and brown communities targeted. We've seen our, our Jewish brothers and sisters targeted. And we know in the face of all of these things that we need someone with experience, with the fighting spirit, to, that is required to defeat all of these threats and someone with a track record of delivery. Congressman Mondaire Jones, thanks for being with us today. Good luck with the race. We will speak to you again soon.